Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. <laughs> oh, I am so excited about being here. And every time Pastor uh, Jeff invites me here, I am just so grateful for it. And so I promise you, I'm not going to keep long. But I, I do want to, I do, you know, the, the Bible says that it's, it's great to confess our sins to one another. Now, is it okay if I confess some, some sin that I've harbored for a while? Is that okay if I confess it to you? Now, will you promise not to tell anyone that I told you this? Well, I must confess to you that I had an, a big, big issue with Pastor Jeff about five weeks ago. And it was just so big, it was like big, big. But he preached a sermon on the greatest. And when he preached that sermon, he was really, he talked about John the Baptist. Jesus says there's never been one as greater as John the Baptist. But when he opened up his sermon, he so eloquently articulated, he had this wonderful picture of about five or six basketball players. And he had Michael Jordan and LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and, and the list goes on. And he concluded that Michael Jordan was the greatest of all times. And I agreed with that. That was, that was real good. That was good. He was okay there. He was safe. But then he showed he had this collage of football players. And, and what Pastor Jeff did was he came and he started this part of his message off by saying, Tom Brady was the GOAT, the greatest of all times. And I agreed with that. And then he showed these, these a number of athletes' face in the background of who was the greatest. And I looked at this list and I said, none of the ones that are on my list is up there. <laughs> so I looked and I said, I played with Ozzie Newsom uh, and I played with Eric Dickerson and Craig James, but I said, there's still one picture that I must leave at this church. So if Pastor Jeff at any moment wants to teach on the greatest ever again, he'll have that picture. And here it is. <laughs> Don't you agree with me? Don't you agree? Yeah, you can see why I was just hurt, right? No. <laughs> it is a joy to be here this morning, and I am so excited. And you know, when I heard about, uh, when I heard about the series, Summer Playlist, how do we navigate through challenges and through struggles and pain? How do we really navigate through some of these experiences that we have in our lives? Well, I did one of the smartest things that I could possibly do. I called my son Caleb. Now, Caleb is, what is my IT specialist in the family. And so he knows all about computers. And I said, Caleb, I'm gonna be uh, preaching in just a few weeks on, uh, on summer playlists. Tell me about your playlist. And I want you to define the term for me. And so Kayla said, Dad, you know, he said, first of all, he said, you better make sure that your playlist fits the occasion. <laughs> See, I didn't, I didn't realize that. He said, for example, I like lifting weights. And he said, so when I go into weight training, or if I go to the gym to lift weights, the last person I'm going to have on my playlist is Taylor Swift or Beyonce. He said, Dad, it just doesn't fit the occasion. And I said, are you kidding? He said, no, no. He said, Dad, when I go lift weights, I want to hear some Snoop Doggy Dog or Metallica. <laughs> well, I'd never heard of Metallica. And I'm like, who in the world is that? Something? But, anyway. <laughs> but he said, they fit the occasion. And then I asked Caleb, I said, Caleb, could you help me understand why is it, imp why is it important? I said, I do know that there is music that that when I, when, I, when I go and do certain things, that it's important to me. And Caleb said, Daddy, whenever I hook up my playlist, there are three things it's got to do. It's got to motivate, it's got to elevate, and it's got to encourage. He said that whenever I hit my playlist, I want whatever comes next. He said, it's got to motivate, elevate, and encourage that if I'm stuck and I don't feel like working out, I need something that's gonna pick me up and say, you need to do it anyway. I need something to say that I need to take it to the next level. And I need something that when I leave, I can say, wow, that felt good. And so he said, that's the purpose of my playlist. And so I processed that a little bit and I thought about it. 
And I said, well, if I came up with a playlist, I said, unfortunately, and I don't want to be super spiritual, but I have learned to make sure I have a playlist of Scripture. Now, I know that sounds kind of weird, but the reality is, is that I have gone through a lot of struggles in my life. And one of the things that you probably don't know about me is that in the past, I have struggled with depression. When I lost my father, I slipped into a depression. When I lost my mother, it was tough for me. That when a doctor called me and told me I only had two years to live, it was extremely tough. And I had to have something that I could hold on to that would help me navigate through difficult times. And I don't know about you, but I want to suggest this this morning. I don't know where you are in your spiritual journey. But it is a great time to say, God, you know what? There are some scriptures that I need to literally memorize so that when I go through tough times, they will allow me to navigate through these tough times. Is that all right? Now, let me, let, let me give you a little bit further. This morning, I want to teach on a man who was in a very difficult situation. And he did not have a, he did not have a playlist. And he struggled. And so I want to talk about this young man, and uh, you heard of him, Gideon. And Gideon, he really struggled. God spoke to him face to face, and he struggled anyway. And I said, only if he had something that would help him navigate through some of the pain and through some of his frustrations, that Gideon would have been so much better. And so I'm going to read to you, and if you have your Bibles, amen, you can turn your Bibles too. Judges chapter 6. Ah, that's a good one, isn't it? And I want to read this to you, and I want to take some principles out of Gideon's life that would apply. Now, if you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, it's only going to be on the overhead, so just read with me. Is that good? So listen to these, one, to these wonderful verses. It says in, in verse 11, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak and Ophir that belonged to Joash the Abderite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. P -p -p Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, but -p -p if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Well, all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? P -p -p Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manassas, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Woo! Isn't that good? <laughs> now that's in my playlist. And what's so awesome is, man, Gideon just didn't get it. He was going through struggles. He was going through challenges. This guy was having a very difficult time. And so if I had to give you a backdrop on what I'm going to talk about this one, listen, now this is going to sound good. I wrote this. I took time to really think this through. It says, my, it says this, principles that empower us to prioritize the Father in our playlist. Mm, mm, mm. Isn't that good? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to give you just a few principles to tell you why we must make our relationship with the Father a priority in our playlist. We must be able to go back into God's Word and say, God, we need you to help us through this. If you are struggling, you cannot, you cannot win this fight by yourself. You cannot just simply overcome depression. You need some help to overcome depression. You cannot just simply say, God, I'm going to overcome hopelessness. No, you need God's help to help us overcome hopelessness. And so let me just, hey amen. Now, you know I ain't going to be here that long today, don't you? Come on, bro. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. And so, hold on, I got to time myself. I'm going to be here for about another 10 minutes. Is that all right? 
Amen, amen. Now, if you ever heard me speak before, you know that's a lie. You just know that. You're not going to even fall for that trick, but, I, but I'll try to get out of here in 15 minutes. And so, and so I got to give you this first principle of how in the world do, you know, do we really overcome some of the challenges. And so this is what I said. I said principle number one. I said my playlist empowers me to elevate my position over my condition. Uh, uh, uh. Isn't that good? Now, did that only impress me? No, 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 no. But, but, but that's what my playlist does. It helps me overcome my condition. It helps me to focus on my position and overcome my condition. Now, the first thing I want to tell you about, I want you, I want you to read about Gideon's condition. It was an ugly condition. This guy was messed up. I, and I would have probably been, you know, just as depressed. But in, in, but in Judges chapter 6, verse 1, it, it talks about his condition. Now, listen to it. You got to hear it. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in clefts of, in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern people invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with, the, it says they came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them on their camp count them or their camels. They, invited the, they invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Mm, mm, mm. Now, can you imagine that? You and your, just your whole people group are living in this wonderful place. And you plant crops. You plant corn, green beans, potatoes, and you've just simply planted enough food for you to last. And all of a sudden, as soon as you turn your back, you get a group of people from out of another place, and it says they were, it was like swarms of locusts, and they come and ravage the land. And when they leave, they not only destroy all of your crops, that they pick up all of your cattle and animals, and they take them with them. Ah. And so as a principle, listen to what I'm saying. My playlist empowers me to elevate my position over my condition. See, Gideon had a horrible condition. He could have been depressed. He could have been you know, hopeless, but, and he had this horrible condition. And if you look at Gideon's life, the only thing he could focus on is how bad it was. And you know, isn't that like us all the time? It's so easy to get so focused on our condition. Have you ever just gotten consumed with it? It may be the death of a spouse or loved one. It could be the death of a father or mother. It could be something like losing weight. It could be a health report that when you go to the doctor, it could be a relationship that's not going very well, that we get so consumed with our condition that we literally get paralyzed in our condition. And we say, God, why me? We're frustrated. It's hard to get over it. It's hard to really shake it. And so God comes. And it says, the angel of the Lord, listen to what he says. The angel of the Lord, listen, you've got to hear what this angel of the Lord said. He says, he, 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 here it is, here it is, right here. He says, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. He said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Ah! He did not focus on his condition. He did not focus on Gideon's problems. He did not focus on Gideon's pain. He didn't focus on Gideon's failures, his hurts. He said, no, the Lord is with you. And then right at the end, he says, mighty warrior. That's a position that God says you can never elevate your condition ah, over your position. See, what God was trying to get Gideon to understand, that even though things were going tough in his life, that God was not concerned with all the stuff that was going wrong because he was still, Gideon was still somebody. G Gideon was a mighty warrior and God said, you still have a purpose. 
You still have a plan. I'm going to continue to use you, Gideon. I know things look bad right now. I I know things look hopeless right now, but God, I'm going to do some things in you, Gideon, and it's going to blow your mind. See, God wasn't focused on his condition. He was focused on his position. Let me give you an example. Can you imagine going through something and God saying in the middle of it, Don't focus on all that stuff that's happened to you because you're still somebody. You're still of great value and you are still of great worth. That I don't know why you're just so consumed with this because I still want to do a purpose and plan. And you know what? Believe it or not, I have a tendency of being distracted on conditions sometimes. That's when a person gets depressed. They are focused on everything that's going wrong and everything that's going bad, and they'll slip into this place of hopelessness and depression, and God is saying, no, 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 let me distract. I still have a purpose and a plan for your life. You are of extreme value, and your value, the value you have in me, it never changes. And so you know what I learned how to do? Instead of having a playlist that helped me focus on the condition, I had to get a, a playlist that focused on my position. I I can remember growing up as a kid, people always focus, you know, they would always talk about me and tell me, oh, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, you're not this, you're not that. And all of a sudden, when I became a follower of Jesus, I started memorizing scripture that focused on my my position, on who I am in Christ. Because who I am in Christ doesn't change. Conditions change every day. My children can act great one day, but the next day I'm like, who in the world raised that kid? And no, no, really. See, that's all condition. But when when I learn to focus on my position, I can now look at it and say, you know what? I understand that my children, they might be doing some crazy stuff, but I'm still somebody. That God still loves me. And then I start playing my playlist that I, listen to this, that that, that, that I am a child of God. That's John 1.12. That yes, 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 I am made in the image of God and in his likeness. Yep, that's Genesis chapter 2, verse 28. Oh, then, oh, what about in Psalms uh, 139? It says 13 and 14, it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I just start quoting it, and then I say, wow, I am a new creation. Or what about Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 and 14, where it says that I am God's workmanship, his handiwork, made anew in him to do his work. I say, God, I am somebody, and my condition will never dictate my position because I am somebody. And I don't know if you slipped in here today and you've got condition and it's it's tough, it's difficult, it's challenged. I came to say that maybe what God is trying to do is to distract you from from your condition and getting you to focus on your position. You are somebody. You are a child of God. You are made in the image of God and in his likeness. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a new creature. You are somebody and never allow anybody to tell you God somebody that you're nobody. You are somebody. Listen, I got to help and get out of here today. You know... You know what? We got the villain here today. I want to confess that. And so I told him if he stands up and pick those cards up at me that I got a few minutes, he got to show them to you too. Is that all right? Amen. Come on, help me out. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, listen, I got to go. I got to get out of here because I, I got, I'm, try, I'm trying to get through here. But so listen, but then I had another principle. So the first principle is you can never, allow, you can never elevate your condition over your position. But then there's another principle here I thought that was real good. Listen to what it, and now, 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 and, and, and listen to what it says. It says that my playlist, I need verses in scripture, I need to remember them. My playlist empowers me to take ownership of my relationship with the Father. Ah, oh, that's good, isn't it? No, 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 let me tell you, I'll read it for you. Listen to verse 13. Verse, now Gideon, I just sometimes wanted to slap Gideon. Bap, shut up, boy. No, no, really. Because sometimes he's kind of whimsy, you know. Well, I'm sorry, that's kind of athletic talk. But listen here. But, you know, you read this guy and you're like, what in the world? He must have been smoking some of that new legalized marijuana in Washington, D.C. I don't know what he's been doing. But listen to what he says here in verse 13. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. This is the guy that the angel of the Lord said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. 
He can't shake it. He's still trapped in his condition. And so, and so, so when I read this, first of all, I thought it was about the past. All of the things that our ancestors told us about. I was like, okay, so maybe God was trying to get him beyond his past. And if we're going to really excel, but that's not really what, the, what he's saying. Let me show you what he's saying. Now, 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 here's the key line. It says right here, where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us? Did you get that? No, no, that's deep. It says, no, no, that's what he says. He says, where are all his wonders, listen, our ancestors told us about? Ah, Gideon never took ownership of his faith. He never took ownership of it. You know what most parents do? We raise our children to really be like Jesus. And so you know what we do? We say, okay, now this is why we pray. And so you explain to the kids how to pray. This is how we study scripture. So you raise your children on how to study, on how to study scripture. This is why you go to church. And so you raise them. But I don't care what happens when that kid turns 18 and go to college. I don't care what you've been teaching that kid. If that kid doesn't take ownership, that kid will never do it. Ah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll never take ownership. They're, no, no, they will. I mean, some of us have kids. Like, I got one, too. I'm like, Lord, you just don't do it, do you? You don't understand. They don't, he doesn't understand it. Because they never, Gideon never took ownership of his faith. And so Gideon was out here, you know what I'm saying? Gideon, take ownership of your faith. Now, he's not taking ownership. Look what, look what our ancestors told us about. This is not about your ancestor. This is not about the miracles that God did for your ancestors. Gideon, you need God to do something new and fresh in your own personal life. You need God to shake you up and wake you up so that you can begin to have a deep-rooted relationship in Jesus. That's what Gideon, take ownership. I remember when I had to take ownership of my faith for the first time. And I, I you know, I'm, I was an old guy when I put my trust in Jesus. And I won't ever forget it, man. I just, my rookie year in the NFL, I put my trust in Jesus. And man, I was on fire for Jesus. And the one thing that the chaplain, Tom Petersburg, taught me was, he said, Ricky, you need to start journaling. And I didn't know why Tom wanted me to journal. He said, journal about all the challenges that God presents and how God helps you overcome the challenges. And I said, okay, I'll do that. And so I started writing it down. So my first year after I signed my contract, and I, was, I wrote that down, God, was, it's amazing. I didn't think it would get done, but the deal got done. And then I went in and I broke my shoulder, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm out. And then once I broke my shoulder, I was frustrated. Then I, I broke my leg. And every challenge, I would just write it down. And this is how God showed up. You know, and then, and then, I, broke my, then I, I, I broke this leg and this arm, this arm, knee, sir, knee scopes, everything. And I'm just, I'm just writing it down. And so all of a sudden, I go up to the owner, Art Modell, after a six-year career. And I said, Art, it is time for me to leave the sport. And Art looked and said, are you crazy? I said, no, I'm not crazy, Art. He said, Rick, I bet no one else agrees with that decision. I, my mother in Dallas, Texas, called me and said, fool, are you crazy? <laughs> my mother-in-law in Dallas, Texas, called me and said, you have lost your mind. And now I'm in the owner's office, and he's calling me crazy. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, Ricky, just tell him, Tell them all that journaling you did. Spit out your playlist. And I said, Art, you know what? I don't know who's going to take care of me. I don't know that. I can't tell you that. But let me tell you what I believe. Based upon the fact that when I signed my contract here, God was with me. Based upon the fact when I broke my body up, God was with me. Based upon the fact that when I had to renegotiate and you guys gave me chaos, God was with me. And based upon the fact that even when I had my knees torn up, God was with me. And I said, God, all right, let me help you understand what a track record is. A track record is when you began to look back over your life 
and you see that God has shown over, shown up over and over and over and over, then what we do today is stand in confidence and say, based upon the past, I know that God is going to provide for me in my present. I don't care what happens in the future, but I know that God has taken care of me every day. Don't you realize oh, God has taken care of me then, oh, up to this day too? And maybe that's what you need. Instead of you be talking about all the all your condition, maybe you need to start journaling your condition and saying, God, listen, listen, I, I went through this and I went through this and I, I went through this and I went through this and suddenly your condition becomes personal to you. You establish a track record. It gives you the confidence to say, God, if God be for me, who can be against me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That yes, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, my Lord. That you develop this track record that God has been with you over and over and over again. We must take ownership of our spiritual journey. If you're in college today, you must stop loving the God that your parents love, and he must become a God to you personally. You, I know some people 50 years old, and they're still serving their mama's God. And the greatest thing you can do is to say, I need God to become alive in my life today. I need to start going to Bible study because what God can do and bring together me and my family. I need to develop a prayer life so that it can impact my family. I need to begin to have accountability groups that I'm in so that it can impact my family. I need people around me because the last thing I want to be caught doing is I don't want to be going through a tough condition and I'm dependent upon my mama's faith to take me through. It will not take you through. It will not. Now listen, let me hear it, but I'm about out. I'm about out. But the last principle, I got you. Hey, show, I told you to show everybody else. <laughs> show it to them real quick. <laughs> now, what should we do with Steve? <laughs> now, Steve is my buddy for a long time. I'm thinking he needs to be there. But let me give you this last point so I can get out of here. But then, listen, now, now I got to give you this last point, and I'm, I'm not going to be but a couple of minutes longer. Listen to what I said here. My playlist empowers me to magnify the master over myself. Did you hear what I'm saying? That's what my playlist does. Now, let me give you an example of what I mean. Now, I want you to help me with this last point. Will you help me real quick? Come on, you know what you say, amen, amen. Thank you so much. So let me tell you what I mean. I want you to help me on this last point. So on this last point, I'm a, you should see the problem with Gideon is he had too many pronouns. Now, amen. <laughs> no, no, no. See, see you, can't, you can do nothing with a whole lot of pronouns. You know, a pronoun is like a boomerang. You throw it out, but guess what it always comes back to? It comes back to you. And if you just read and, and, and follow his pronouns, you'll see what Gideon's problem was. And if you're going through challenges, you'll see that this is your primary problem. Now, let's go. Now, now, now every time, you all know what a pronoun is, don't you? I, me, my, our, those are all pronouns. And they always point back to who? You. So every time I read a pronoun, I want you to count out real loud. Is that all right? Come on, amen, come on, help me. Okay, so, so I want you to read these pronouns. So here it comes right here. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. Now here's verse 15, listen. Keep going. Pardon me. Hold on, wait a minute now. We got off that one. That's 10, that's 10, that's 10. Oh, that's 11? Oh. Okay, 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 listen. No, no, his is referring to God. I'm talking about to, oh, you're right, you're exactly right. Can we get an English tutor to, to uh, just, 
after work. No, I'm teasing. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, so pardon me. My Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Fifteen pronouns and two verses. Did you hear that? Fifteen pronouns. In two verses. Now, can I tell you what the problem is with using pronouns all the time? See, the problem is because when you use a pronoun specifically to you, you, it causes you to get bigger and bigger and bigger. My car, my house, my children, my jewelry, my money, my husband, my wife. Oh, this is my school. This is my job. Oh, look at me and my and me and my and me and my. And guess what's happening? See, you're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But what's happening to God? God is getting smaller and smaller smaller. Isn't that amazing? Now, now let me tell you what's so, I, what I think is so amazing. When the angel of the Lord spoke to Gideon, it was just so amazing because the, the, I want, you look at, look at this, the, I mean, look at this conversation, the angel of the Lord. He says in verse 12, he says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now listen, what he just jump over to 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of, Midian, out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But then, and then, and then go over to verse 16. Listen what it says. The Lord answered, I will be with you and you will strike down all the Midianites leaving none alive. It was about him being with Gideon. Gideon is all caught up in himself. Look at me. And so Gideon made himself, he, he, he magnified himself. But when you magnify yourself and you're talking about your job and you're talking about your promotion, you magnify and you become the object. But God was saying, wait a minute, Gideon. Instead of making you bigger and bigger, why don't you, why don't you change that? Why don't you make me who I am? I am the king of kings. I am the Lord of lords. I am the lily of the valley. I am the bright and morning star. I am the first and I am the last and I am the alpha. I am the omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am your joy. I am your sorrow. I am your hope. I am your tomorrow. You see, God gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But guess what happens to Gideon? He gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so you know the verse I always pull out on my playlist for, for that one? I go to Psalms 34. You know what Psalms 34 says? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Now, you know what a magnifying glass is. Most of you have seen one before. See, a magnifying, it's like these glasses. You know, I wear, <laughs> I wear these glasses because they, they magnify things. <laughs> Amen. When you look at something, Guess what happens? It gets bigger. It's not, it's not small anymore. It gets bigger and bigger. The more I look at it, I say, God, hey, you know, that's what happened to these letters. Before. Now if I look at them, they're blurry and they're small. But if I put on these magnifying glasses, guess what happened? It gets bigger. The object in which they're placed over gets larger. And that's the message that God is sending to us today. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let's make God get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger that we might be smaller and smaller and smaller. And all of a sudden, as we go through our conditions, our conditions is really not that big because we really have a God that is bigger than our conditions. 
Isn't that something that God is so much bigger that God can solve any problem? He can solve a layoff. God can solve health issues. God can solve age issues. He can solve anything because God's big enough to do it. And so I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know where you are today. Maybe you slipped in here and you say, Rick, you know, I'm going through it. I'm a master of masks. And I really come to church and I've been wearing a mask. But maybe deep down inside, there's something deeper that you're going through. See, I came here to pray for you. I came here to say, to, to remind you that don't get focused on your condition because you're of great value. Focus on your position. I came here to say that really, you need to take ownership of your faith. And once you take ownership of your faith, guess what? It's going to impact your relationship with the Father. I came here to say that, listen, stop focusing on you but make God bigger. And God's going to show up and show out in your life like never before. So no matter what you're going through, you've got a God who can solve it. But you've got to take your eyes off your condition. And you've got to put them on your position and on the Father who can empower you to walk through these things. And if you're here today, listen, I didn't come here just to preach a sermon. I came here to pray for you. I said, there's some people in Houston, Texas that are going through. Jesus, can you send them so that I can just pray for them? Now, now I'm going really, to really, really put you on the line. Now, I know, like, if you go to the black church and you tell them, hey, I want to pray for you, everybody in the church just stand up. We'll, we'll just pop it up all over the place. <laughs> in the white church, you, you got to have it together. Like, all right, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm trying to tell <laughs> Y'all know that's the truth. Amen. Amen. That's the truth, right? I'm not going to let Harry see me stand up and pray. <laughs> I don't understand that. But anyway, listen, listen, listen. listen I'm going to ask you to jump out. If you're here this morning, you say, Rick, I am going through. And I do need to be distracted from my condition and put my attention back on the Father, on my position. Would you just stand up on your feet so I can pray? Just that, thank you so much. But that was a good pop Yeah, just stand up. Rick, you know, I need prayer today. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. Just stand up all over the house. That, yeah, this has been a tough summer. This has been a tough year. But God, I need, I, I need prayer this morning. I need you to step in, intervene. And this is your lesson. Get distracted off of what you're going through and get distracted on the Father. Yeah, that's the, this is a time that if you're going through something, you should be fine. Listen, you should, you should be joining a men's Bible study. God, how do I get around a group of men who can support me and walk with me and really, really go through this with me you, so that they can help me stay focused on the Father? But I want to tell you, God, God wants to do it for you. You've tried doing it by yourself, and you're still stressed. Amen? I, I know it. I feel it. I understand that I've been there. And so if, if you would, I just want, I just, this is the purpose I'm here this morning is to pray for you. Just bow with me. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. And Father, so often we just come and we, we become masters of wearing masks. Where we can just simply come to church and look good. But deep down inside, Father, there are all types of pain and, and hurt that we're experiencing. And so Jesus, I pray I pray that no matter what a person is going through, they understand that you want to meet them right in the midst of their pain. Therefore, Father, I pray that you will blow a fresh wind of your Holy Spirit into their hearts right now. I pray, Father, that you will motivate them, that they will encounter you in a fresh way, that they will be motivated to keep going. I pray that they will be elevated Elevated to the point that they say it's time to go to a whole new level in our spiritual lives. I pray that they will be encouraged. Encouraged to say, God, you know what? I'm so glad that I've got the refreshing touch of Jesus this morning. So, Father, I elevate everyone that's on their feet this morning. And I surrender them to you, Father. I pray that you will blow a fresh wind of your spirit into their hearts. Father, I pray that you will revive their spirits, revive their hopes, and revive their confidence because they know that they can look to the hills 
from which cometh their help. Their help comes from you, Father. Father, I pray that even as they stand here, Father, you will begin to prepare them with new visions, new dreams, new goals, new objectives. That even as they leave this, leave this place, Father, they will leave with a sense of excitement because as the angel of the Lord said, that he's going to be with them, that you, the God of Israel is going to be sending them out of here and you will be working with them. I thank you for that. And so, Father, as I commit them to you, Father, as I submit them to you, I pray that you will show up in their lives and not just show up, but show out. That they'll know, Father, that it was you that impacted their lives. To you be glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what, you that are sitting, why don't you just stand up and encourage your brothers and your sisters? Isn't that what the body is for? It is to encourage them. It is to say, to speak a word of life. Maybe you see one of your friends standing. Maybe it's time for you to get, pick up the phone and say, hey, we, I can walk with you. If you need anything, give me a call. Because that's what this church is for. It is so that we can walk with one another. It is to say, how do we help restore our brothers and sisters? That's what, that's what the harbor is all about. How do we get them refueled to keep going the distance? How do we do it? Well, just look and say, God, you know what? I'm going to find somebody. I'm going to meet a new friend today. And God's going to bless you like never before. Now, just as we leave today, there are going to be some people to my right, to your left. If you want more prayer, there will be a team that will be praying over here on the side. I want you to go over and be with them. Is that all right? Just be with them and say, hey, you know what? I, I just, oh, if you need to talk, just go and be with the team. They will bless your heart like never before. Thank you so much for being here. And guess what? Focus on your position and not on your condition. God bless you. God keep you.